students in this session we will learn about terms relating to dc networks ohm's law and its limitation we will as well look into energy sources and its types and also source conversion when we switch on a bulb it glows this is an example of a circuit let us see what is meant by a circuit a circuit is a conducting path for the flow of electric current if you observe we have got a circuit with a source as well as a load and a conducting path so when it when the switch is closed the current it tries to flow through the circuit and the load does the job so an electric circuit it may consists of source conducting wires and loads knowing about a circuit let us talk about what is meant by a circuit element a circuit element is an individual circuit component the examples could be a resistor inductor capacitor and a source these are the circuit elements that are present now let's talk about in detail about the circuit elements we have generally two types of circuit elements that is active elements and passive elements let us focus upon the active elements the active elements are those circuit elements which can work independently and supply energy to a network as we have seen in the previous circuit we have got one source here that source is an active element here we have batteries as well as generators can be stated as an examples for an active elements let us see about the passive elements passive elements are those circuit elements which consume or store energy and whose action depends on the active elements as we have seen the active elements are resistors inductors and capacitors a resistor consumes the power whereas inductor and capacitor they store energy in magnetic as well as in electric flux form let's talk about the next aspect that is a circuit if you look at this particular circuit now let me ask you what do you mean by a branch what do you mean by a branch a h is a branch b c is one branch and d e is another branch likewise we have got others as well knowing this can we define what is meant by a branch yes a group of elements usually in series and with two terminals is defined as a branch isn't it this is an element which has got two terminals this is what we mean by a branch let us talk about the next one that is a junction or a node what do you mean by a junction or a node junction the name itself suggests that it has got two or more elements connected at a point now let us define it it is a terminal of any branch or network common to two or more branches as we can see b is one junction c is another g as well as f likewise we have got other junctions a d e and h now let's talk about the next that is a loop what do you mean by a loop 
it is a single closed path for the flow of current irrespective of active or passive elements in a network. It is a single closed path. If we observe here, we have got this is one single closed path. This we can say as a loop. Now, let us talk about an independent loop. What do you mean by an independent loop? Let us first define it. An independent loop is one which does not contain loops within. In the previous example, we have seen that the single loop was like this, is not it? In this, we have got some internal loops as well. Whereas, an inter independent loop is one which does not have any loops inside it. If you observe A, B, G, H and A is an independent loop, because it does not have any loops inside it. Likewise, we have C, D, E and F and C, this is an another independent loop. These loops do not have any internal loop inside. Now, let us talk about a lumped network. What do you mean by a lumped network? That is, it is a network which has physically separate resistors, capacitors and inductors. All these are connected, these are physically present, resistance, capacitance and inductance are connected. Now, let us talk about the distributed network. What do you mean by it? Lumped means as we have seen all the things are kept at a one particular place. Whereas, in a distributed network, if we define a network in which resistors, capacitors and inductors cannot electrically separated and individually isolated as separate elements. Such a network is known as distributed network. Can you think of one example of such a network? Yes, does something come to your mind? Yes, we have got the transmission lines. If we observe the transmission lines, the wires that have, it has got resistance, inductance as well as capacitance. This is not lumped together. This is present over all the line, is not it? Such a network is called as a distributed network. Now, let us talk about the linear elements. What type of elements we call them as linear elements? An element whose V i characteristics is a straight line passing through origin is called a linear element. That is, if we observe, we have got a voltage source as well as a resistance. If you plot the characteristics of this one, it comes out to be like this. So, this is the graph we have. So, it is passing from the origin. Such type of an element which gives us a V i characteristics of a straight line is called as a linear element. Knowing about the linear element, let us talk about the nonlinear element. Can you think of any nonlinear element? Yes. A diode is a nonlinear element. If we see a circuit element is nonlinear if relation between current and voltage is not constant and V i characteristics is not linear. In the previous case, we have seen that the relation between voltage and current it was a constant. Whereas, in a nonlinear element, we have got the relation is not constant. Here, we have got the characteristics, the V i characteristics of a diode. So, such an element is called as a nonlinear element, whose characteristics are not linear. Now, let us talk about both 
the differences between a linear network and a nonlinear network. A linear network is a network which consists of linear elements as we have seen and a nonlinear network is a network which consists of nonlinear elements. Now, let us go in for a unilateral element. If we observe, we have got the source which is an AC source and it is connected to a diode and to a load. A unilateral element means the current flow is only in one direction, unidirection. So, that is why if we observe, this is the AC supply, we have got only the positive cycles the negative cycles are not allowed. Now, let us define it. It is an element which allows current in only one direction. Example can be stated as a diode. As if you observe, the flow is only in one direction and in the output as we have seen, we have got only positive cycles. Now, let us talk about the bilateral element. A bilateral element allows us the flow in both the directions. This is one direction and we can have the flow in the other direction as well. So, we have as AC as an input, we will get AC as an output. Now, let us define it. An element which allows current in both directions is a bilateral element. Examples can be stated as resistor, inductor and a capacitor. Now, let us go further and see what is meant by a passive network. A network which contains only circuit elements like resistors, capacitors, inductors and without any energy sources, without any energy sources such a network is called as a passive network. Let us look into the active network. It is a network which has at least one energy source together with other circuit elements we have got an energy source as well as the other circuit elements. Such a network is called as an active network. Knowing about these fundamentals, we will be able to learn more about the circuit and its applications. Now, let us look into the most important law that is the Ohm's law. What does it state? the current flowing in a circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference driving it, provided the temperature is constant. That is, I is directly proportional to V. So, I is equal to V by R. This we already know the Ohm's law. Now, what I am want to refer is, what are the limitations of Ohm's law? where we cannot apply Ohm's law. Let us look into that aspect. The limitations of Ohm's law are, it cannot be applied to a network involving elements whose properties are changing with respect to temperature, chemical changes and direction, current directions. Examples which can be stated are vacuum tubes, electrolytes, arc lamps and semiconducting devices. So, Ohm's law cannot be applied to this. Let us talk about the various energy sources that we have. We have a voltage source and a current source. Let us talk in detail about the voltage source. A voltage source is represented by a source 
which has an resistance. This resistance is actually the internal resistance that is present inside the source. For representation sake, we have brought it outside. Now, let us see how it is defined. A voltage source is represented by a source and a resistance in series. So, this entire block forms the voltage source. Now, if we see that if the resistance that is internal resistance is say it is about 2 ohms. Let us check out what is the impact of this resistance on the load voltage. If we are applying a voltage V, let us tablet one so that we can just check out what is the impact of the internal resistance got a source current drop and terminal voltage. If the source voltage is 200 volts, say the current flowing is 5 amperes, then the drop that is I into R phi into 2 which is 10, the terminal voltage is 190 volts. Likewise, in the other case if the current is 10 amperes, then the drop 10 into 2 that is 20 is the drop. So, the terminal voltage is 180 volts. If we observe the terminal voltage is falling as the load current is increasing, this is a not desirable one. This is what generally a voltage source is. Now, let us see what is meant by an ideal voltage source. If you observe can you find the difference between this figure as well as the previous figure? Yes, we do not have the resistance that is an ideal voltage source does not have an internal resistance, the internal resistance is 0. So, let us define an ideal voltage source. It is one which gives a constant voltage V irrespective of the current drawn from it the source impedance or resistance is 0. As we see that there is no resistance, so there will be no drop. So, thereby we will be able to obtain the terminal voltage as constant one, whatever may be the load, the drop is not there, is not it. So, the internal voltage drop is 0 in the case of an ideal voltage source. Now, let us look into the next one that is a current source. It is represented by a current source which has got a resistance in parallel. This entire block forms a current source. A current source is represented by a source and a shunt resistance that is the resistance which is connected in parallel to the source. This is how we are going to represent a current source. Now, let us see what is meant by an ideal current source. If we observe the figure seems to be almost similar to the previous one, let us see an ideal current source has got infinite resistance that is there is almost a break in between the resistance that is it is an open. So, we have got the resistance is infinite. Such a source is called as an ideal current source. Let us define it. It is one which gives a constant current I irrespective of voltage across it with infinite internal resistance that is whatever may be the load, the current supplied by the current source is always constant irrespective of the voltage across the load. Knowing about these two that is a current source and a voltage source, let us see how we can transform one into another. Let us talk about the transformation of voltage source to a current source. As we have seen a voltage source consists of a source in series with a resistance and a load. 
if you want to convert this into a current source then we know the relation i is equal to v by r. So, we will be having the current source with the current i and the resistance is connected across the current source that is in parallel. So, this is how we will be able to convert the voltage source into a current source. Likewise, let us try transforming the current source into a voltage source. The current source a source and a resistance connected in parallel to convert this into a voltage source we have V is equal to I into R. So, we can put on the voltage with V and the resistance is connected in series to the source. This is how we will be able to transform the current sources to the voltage sources and voltage sources to current sources. A circuit is a conducting path for the flow of electric current. An electric circuit it may consist of source, conducting wires and loads. A circuit element is an individual circuit component. The examples could be a resistor, inductor, capacitor and a source. We have generally two types of circuit elements that is active elements and passive elements. Here we have batteries as well as generators can be stated as an examples for an active elements. The active elements are resistors, inductors and capacitors. A group of elements usually in series and with two terminals is defined as a branch. It is a terminal of any branch or network common to two or more branches. It is a single closed path for the flow of current irrespective of active or passive elements in a network. An independent loop is one which does not contain loops within. It is a network which has physically separate resistors, capacitors and inductors. All these are connected, these are physically present, resistance, capacitance and inductance are connected. A network in which resistors, capacitors and inductors cannot electrically separated and individually isolated as separate elements. Such a network is known as distributed network. Can you think of one example of such a network? Yes, does something come to your mind? Yes, we have got the transmission lines. If an element whose V i characteristics is a straight line passing through origin is called a linear element that a diode is a non-linear element. If we see a circuit element is non-linear if relation between current and voltage is not constant and V i characteristics is not linear. It is an element which allows current in only one direction example can be stated as a diode as if you observe the flow is only in one direction and in the output as we have seen we have got only positive cycles. An element which allows current in both directions is a bilateral element examples can be stated as resistor, inductor and a 
capacitor. A network which contains only circuit elements like resistors, capacitors, inductors and without any energy sources, without any energy sources, such a network is called as a passive network. It is a network which has at least one energy source together with other circuit elements. The current flowing in a circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference driving it provided the temperature is constant. That is I is directly proportional to V, so I is equal to V by R. It cannot be applied to a network involving elements whose properties are changing with respect to temperature, chemical changes and direction, current directions. Examples which can be stated are vacuum tubes, electrolytes, arc lamps and semiconducting devices, a voltage source and a current source. A voltage source is represented by a source and a resistance in series. So, this entire block forms the voltage source. It is one which gives a constant voltage V irrespective of the current drawn from it. The source impedance or resistance is zero. As we see that there is no resistance, so there will be no drop. So, thereby we will be able to obtain the terminal voltage as constant one, whatever may be the load, the drop is not there, is not it? So, the internal voltage drop is zero in the case of an ideal voltage source. A current source is represented by a source and a shunt resistance that is the resistance which is connected in parallel to the source. This is how we are going to represent a current source. It is one which gives a constant current I irrespective of voltage across it with infinite internal resistance. So far, we came to know about DC network terms like branch, loop, junction, unilateral element and so on. We have also seen where we cannot apply Ohm's law. Energy sources which are voltage source and current source, we as well came to know how to convert voltage source to a current source and a current source to a voltage source. With this knowledge, we will be able to solve network problems with great ease. Further clarification, contact the additional secretary, State Board of Technical Education and Training, 7th floor, BRKR Bhavan, Tank Burn Road, Hyderabad 5000063 fax 0403220546